Welcome back to my channel, artists. Today we'll be doing wacky portrait drawings. Step number one, to draw a face. I like to start by putting my hand down and drawing an oval around to make it a nice size for the face. And then I'm gonna draw right down the center the line for the sideways view of the face. If you are in the classroom, we'll talk a little bit more about why we're doing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and add an eye and lips and ears to this side of the face, only focusing on that face that's on the right-hand side first. So there you can see I have lips and ears. For the next step, I'm gonna to go to the left-hand side of the face and draw a regular face, trying to make it separate from that right-hand side with eyes, lips, and ears on the left. Now I am ready for step number two to add neck and hair. I wanna make sure again that my two portraits are looking a little different. So for the neck on the right is gonna look different than the neck on the left. I added some wacky lines as well for a pattern in the shirt. And I'm going to draw hair on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I am demonstrating what it's like to draw long hair because long hair is usually easier. You do wanna make sure that if you have long or short that you have at least three sections to the hair, not coloring it in, just lines sections. And I went ahead and added some shapes in the background. Step number three is going to be to outline with a Sharpie. Because there's gonna be a lot of lines on here, I use a very thick Sharpie to outline the most important lines, that being the lines for the face and the lines for the neck and the shoulders. The rest of the portrait you'll see I outline with a regular Sharpie. I do go back at the end of the video and use a thicker Sharpie for the hair. I just felt like it needed it, so that might be something you wanna consider as well. Now that I have finished outlining my lines, I'm gonna go ahead and erase any of the pencil lines that poke out, and I am ready for step number four, to color the dark areas. So I'm gonna again try to think about my left side and my right side as two different portraits. So I'm gonna be coloring in part of the ears, the eyebrows, the eyes, all a little bit different to try to make sure that the um, outlines on, I'm sorry, the portraits on either side look different. I'm gonna be coloring in larger spaces with a sharp just to make some, um, instead of the whole picture looking light right now, I want to have lots of dark areas to add to my picture just to make it pop out. Now that I have finished adding some details on the dark areas in the portrait, I'm gonna go ahead and add some dark areas in the hair. Because I have three different sections, I have lots of different choices for how I want to make that hair. I do try to make sure the hair is different on either side. Again, thinking about that left side portrait being different than that right side portrait. So on the right hand side, you can see I've got dark hair right next to the um, ears. And then I'm gonna just trace um, some lines to make the other parts a little bit um, darker and act kind of um, accent that outline there on the hair. And then on the left hand side, I'm gonna pick a different area to color in dark, making sure I have nice large blocked areas. You'll also notice that, notice that I'm using a thick Sharpie for this because it's gonna be a lot of coloring. And so I thought I probably need a really thick Sharpie for this.
that I have finished adding Sharpie values, I'm ready for step number five to add pencil values. To add those pencil values, um, you wanna think about the darkest area. If you're in the classroom, we're gonna talk a lot about where light hits and where shadows hit, but wherever your dark area is, you wanna press dark with your pencil and then blend it out. Um, it might be easier to do this on the different piece of paper to like, um, just to smear on your finger and just get a dirty blended finger to use, or just make sure that you're using nice blended values and you don't see any like scribble lines on your paper because that would kind of take away from it. Um, just add as many of those tones or medium values, those gray values that you can on the face. You don't want the entire face to be one color. You want to have lighter areas and darker areas. So just kind of think around my face, where can I see a shadow? Where might I see one in real life? Like right underneath that eyebrow line or um, a chin, um, I'm sorry, a cheek line, the edges of the face. Uh, just think about some areas that might be darker and then of course blend into the lighter spaces on your face. I hope that you have enjoyed making art with us today. What will you create?